So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Wednesday, the, I don't know, uh, last two days I had to care about some other stuff and also most of the packages were uh, still on their way. But I guess today we can really dive into it. The thing I want to start with is machining most of the parts made of aluminum uh, because I do have to glue them to the granite and I want them to at least have the chance over the weekend to to fully cure. It's not the warmest spot in here. We do have around 16 to 17 degrees so I guess two or three or four days even of uh, setting time would be adequate. So I'm gonna do an unboxing here and then I guess you're gonna see me walking over to the mill and start with the first pieces. Okay, I've sought the first batch of parts to uh, the right sizes. We're gonna start with the pieces that have to be glued. Ja, viel ist da nicht dran, ne? Ja. Okay, so this is installed here with the least amount of parts. And right now we're gonna take... Uh, I need some kind of a datum on this part to actually machine this. Um, so what I try to do is get the uh, the me measurement from this top surface to the uh, the inner edge of the tube. And what we're going to do on the machine is to run a ball nose end mill around here to get I think two or three millimeters of clearance for the ball screw. And also we need some threads to get a plate on here, which will then actually hold the, the ball screw nut. If you're interested in how deep these grooves are to evenly spread the, the air, so it's right about three, 30 microns. Yeah, 
30 microns. So, uh, also, I just made the discovery that everywhere where these, at all the points that the, the air exits into these channels, there seems to be a ruby in there. I've never seen that before. If everyone uh, has got a solid answer on how or why they're here, I'd be really pleased to hear about that. Alright, what you're looking at here is the flange bearing for the ball screw on the Z-axis. Um, so I'm faced with two options. Either I enlarge the hole that is already in the Z-axis assembly. I can show you that later. Um, or I turn down this small and inexpensive flange nut. So decision was pretty easy. Um, I will be turning this down from 36 to 30 millimeters, um, which shouldn't be a problem. I looked it up, the bearings um, inside are 26 millimeters, I guess. Indicated this as true as possible and gonna be turning this down and also touching up the face so everything is perpendicular to each other. Okay, a bit of the bearing left and then we can move on to the next part or three parts I might say. These are the standoffs for uh, the Z-axis servo. Okay, I've made the test fit. The ball screw is in here. It's cause full of grease. I just left the package on there. Um, so the flange journal I you saw me turn down on the lathe is installed, or it's just resting in here. Also, I put in the clutch and the standoffs. And I was just making sure that I didn't do any major mistakes in CAD. So what I was interested in is if these are clearing, which they do, and also this clearance from the Z-axis itself. Uh, of course, the motor driver will be just turned to another, another spot. So this is a fit and I can move on. Okay, we're still on the Z-axis. Um, so next part is gonna be um, has got a lot of functions to it and this is this one so that's why I 3d printed it last night it serves a lot of functions so first of all it's a clamping unit to the shaft itself this one also connects to the ball screw so this piece does transmit all the motion forces from the uh, from the servo over the ball screw and into this shaft so another function is to connect to this little guy and what this does, you see it also has some hoses connected to it and this is a very highly polished shaft. So 
this is also an air bearing. Let me get this out of here, maybe. As you can see, it does have all the uh, the marks from the mill, and is also very tight tolerance. So this is riding on here, and what this does is to prevent the whole shaft from spinning. Also, I put in this little knob, which will later on be um, the finger that gives signal to an induction sensor. That way we can do a reference point. And this piece was somewhat important because not only I was able to see if it all fits, see it can move freely, but there's not really that much space. But also I have to modify this a bit. This is the second air bearing I have to mill down today. Um, so early on this was attached from this side, but I first of all I don't I didn't like this design and second of all um, the ball screw is in the way. So I have to drill a few holes in here. But first of all, I have to deck this surface on the mill to make it flat. It hasn't been before. So the 3D printed part has let me enable to um, mark this to at least get the heights correct. I did put on some shim stock down here to see if I got clearance or all the screws and such and yeah, I do know all my measurements, so from now on I can just disconnect the hoses, put this on the mill, mill it perpendicular to these to these faces because these are properly machined. Um, and if I do that, I know that once I get it to here, I don't have to adjust it too much, I guess. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, the part is only resting on one of these parallels, um, so I just wanted to pick up one surface and the only orientation I really do care about is if this is level with the world in this direction. This is the only thing I care about. If it tips over like this, it doesn't really matter. By adjusting the tension on the hydraulic, I can pretty much dial this in and just measure on the on the fixed jaw of the vise. So I know for sure that this material is um, parallel from this side to the inner surface and the whole material is resting against the fixed jaw of the vise. That's what given it uh, the orientation. So by having the fixed jaw absolutely perpendicular to the world um, or to the axis I'm going to be milling on, I should have this part exactly perpendicular to uh, the contraption I'm screwing this to. At least in theory. Another one down. Okay, the clamping part you heard me talking about on the Z-axis. Since I do know everything fits because of the 3D printed part, I can now machine this in aluminum. So I'm doing first sight on this machine and later on I'll switch to the bigger Maho and clamp on these features I just machined here. <laughs> I guess this is all for today. There's only Friday left. Originally I wanted to do the the glue up today, but that didn't happen. So okay, we'll check on the schedule again. Ah, uh, you see this? That's what you get for praising the tapping lord. On each project you gotta lose one tap, at least. But that's okay.
okay, this is the reference surface I did as a last step on the the other Maho. Let's see. This is parallel here. I'm gonna pick this up as my origin and set a clamp in here and then we'll do the outside machining. So I've made some progress, um, as you can see there are all three axes just um, laid out with all the parts. So I put on all the right bearing blocks, I checked all the clearances, I assembled all the, all the screws and nuts. Next step will be to really go into preparation for the glue up. These parts will be glued and I just gave them a quick buff on the outside so they look nice but backside is like um, sanded with some 60 grit emery cloth in two directions. So this should give the glue a bit more of a surface area to grab on. And that's basically what I'm going to do here. Uh, plan is to mark this with uh, some tape the area where I want to glue and then rough this surface up. So I didn't film too much uh, because concentration level was has got to be high. It's about 60 minutes since we did the glue up. I'm confident this will work. I just triple checked all the, the measurements so I decided to take this as a reference and measure with a caliper onto these surfaces which turn out to be great and these two screw jacks are to give it some, some force upwards. Uh, there's a, kind of the same, um, it was a bit weird because of the big overhangs, I couldn't get any uh, standard clamp to wrap onto there, so we were building some kind of a, a, a foot for this. So it's Friday, 5 o'clock. Sasha PM. arcs. I love that. And I guess this, this will do it for this week, I guess. I mean, it's going to be everything you see on the video. Um, I'm going to have to let this set at least Monday morning, I would say. It's like 15, 17, 7, yeah, like 17 degrees in here. So um, I don't want to risk this glue up by giving it the beans way too early. Ha! <laughs> and you thought I was done for this week, you fools. We get on with the Z-axis. I want to have this thing together, so follow me. 
While the time lapse is running, we have the chance to briefly answer some questions. Sasha asks if there will be a shop tour someday. Yes, there will be. I try to film this next time I do a major cleanup, but I can't give you any fixed date to this. Matush, all the air bearings on the machine are the original ones. The X axis is also still in factory alignment. Also, Julian is asking on the air consumption. The sh machine has got 18 air bearings in total. And total consumption is around 100 liters per minute. The working pressure is around 5 bars. Ryan wants to know which I controller I did pick. The answer is maybe just a temporary one. I bought one of the cheapest 32-bit based 3D printer boards. It is set up for 5 axes and has all the basic functions already wired to connectors. Most importantly was to be really fast in setting this up and keep the programming to a bare minimum. So with this I'm able to run Marlin firmware and also connect to the servos really easy. But we'll get into that when we get the machine running. To Lord Sniffle Piffle. We'll talk about why I choose the exact ball screws when we run the servos for the first time and PID tune the controller. You choose the right screw to the servo and vice versa. For now, I picked these low budget 3 piece split couplers with a plastic connector. These are great because you can order these in any sizes to adapt every motor to every shaft. They also dampen shocks pretty well and allow for slight misalignment of the two shafts. How to start your CAD designs is a difficult question. Every task is different and should be handled accordingly. But usually I tackle all tasks with the same principle. Start really rough and try to pinpoint your problem to just one sentence. Then give yourself an overview on what functions your, do your finished design should have. Brainstorm, make rough sketches to all of these functions and then try to combine them to a concept. This all happens on paper. If you go into CAD, you do basically the same. Start really rough, sketch your ideas and every 30 minutes take a break and have a look at your initial problem. Did you solve it? If not, iterate once more. All of this shrink fitted into one sentence. Fail early, fail cheap. So this is the z-axis completely installed. As you can see this is uh, ball screw is hooked up, ball nut is connected. There's this air bearing which is in there. I might have to check if this is perpendicular enough or if I made a mistake. It's kind of snug but I can't hook it up to air because all the holes there are are open and I can't get any pressure to here so I have to build this up to the machine. Other than that everything is removed what I don't want to have in here. Everything is clean. So I guess this is also pretty much ready to go. That's making more sense right now to end this video. At least I'm satisfied with the current status. So let, let me get you updated. I removed the tape um, from the glue joints and had a bit of a clean up there. So as you can see x-axis is pretty much complete. There's only this one piece missing that will go somewhere in here and connect this to the balls, uh, ball nut. But I decided to do that the very last and measure the distance from bottom surface to middle of the ball screw when everything is installed right in the middle of my tolerance. Um, that way I don't run into issues and have to make everything super adjustable. I can do this on pretty low tolerance. So that will be one of the first things to do on Monday. And then this axis will be complete. Uh, as you can see servo is on. Um, needs to be wired though. But one of my main requirements is realized. So there, if you look at the original cover of the Johansson, see this is pretty much flush with the outside of the granite. And as you can see here, I might be able to mount the cover back on on both sides. But I'll decide that. Um, 
on the top, uh, y-axis, everything is installed as well. There's a coupler in here, and servo is mounted up, bearing blocks mounted. This is still how I left it yesterday. And everything is pretty much in line. Nothing moved on me over the night, so I'm pretty happy with that. So, um, as to an end of this video, I think... Well, it isn't moving. That was my original plan by Sunday, but I will leave that up to your imagination. I do have a pretty much set image in mind how this thing is moving right now. Imagine the voices it's make, making. So these will be very quiet. You will hear light shh of the air bearings. Will be pretty epic, I guess. So we, you guys have to wait, I guess, at least a week on this with all the holidays. I don't know if I can make it next Sunday, but um, next thing to do is, as I said, I will mill this and I will hook up the controller. I have to get in the switching cabinet anyway and remove all the junk. Um, see how much of the PLC will stay, get the Arduino in there, run hundreds of wires, get all the sensors hooked up and such. So, busy week next day, I guess, next to 150 different projects, but I'm all in for this. So, guys, stay tuned, have a nice weekend, bye.